Well, hey, I guess we'll talk about Raw. Yeah, I gotta talk about yeah, Raw. So. I'll remember more stories as the weeks go on, I'm sure. We watched WWF Monday Night Raw Season 1, Episode 7, March 1st, 1993. As promised last week, our opener is in fact Bret Hart versus one of the head shrinkers. Fatu, if you must know, so it'd be future Rikishi. So, I don't know why, but at random, for no apparent reason, Rob Bartlett decided to do the entire show in an Elvis costume. Right. So, he's doing his accent, and he's making jokes about milkshakes and cheeseburgers, because Elvis was fat, you know. And uh, he's talking about talking to little Elvis... And Vince McMahon says... Is that his urinator? Uh, his, his, his wang, uh, yeah. yeah. So Vince McMahon says, in the most deadpan delivery in the history of the earth, very, very strange, Elvis, I must say, having you with us here on Monday Night Raw. I laughed so hard. <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, this guy's grown on me, because, you know, Vince playing off Rob Bartlett as Elvis, that's it's good times. And... Um, it also was inter- inter- interesting to me because you watch these old Raws, and they're not very good. No. But you know they are? They're pro wrestling. And sure. uh, Vince talks about pro wrestling, and he talks about how Brett's a great pro wrestler, and he's talking about wrestling, wrestling, and he's talking about doing how, oh, you wouldn't think a man in a clown costume would be a good wrestler, but in fact, he is a very accomplished grappler. He's marking out for the wrestling and I always thought, you know what, if I could ask Vince McMahon one question, probably would be, when did you start hating wrestling and why? Because, like, you sure do love it in 1993. Have but anyway, on a cruise. the other thing that I uh, that I thought about was it's just so different now because it's so overproduced and no one's allowed mm-hmm. to do anything yep. and you've got no freedom. It's very sterile. And uh, 1993, Rob Bartlett, like, fucking showed up dressed as Elvis and he was like, can I do Elvis today? And Vince was like, oh, Whatever. And uh, he did the whole fucking show dressed as Elvis. And it was like, it wasn't like great. You don't got to go out of your way to see it. But it was different and it was wacky and it was fun. And uh, we don't get a lot of different wacky and fun on WWE TV nowadays. I don't see Vic Joseph doing NXT in a random Elvis costume. Uh, No, it just wouldn't wouldn't happen. It'd be strange. So this match may have gone longer than Okada and Shingo at the Tokyo Dome. (laughs) It was not as good. As Okada and Shingo the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, uh, but you know what? It was good. Mm-hmm. Was it though? I, th- I thought that this was a good match. If you like nerve pinches, have I got a match well, for you? Well, it was a very, very basic match. And Brett had a couple of spots that were different. Like, there was one spot where he, he was running the ropes. <clears throat> he was good. And uh, he acted like he tripped. Yeah. The, uh, and he grabs his knee. And he's a baby face, by the way. Yeah. And the ref goes to check on him. And then he rolls the dude up and tries to pin him. He, he, which he, wasn't cheating. No. He didn't cheat. No. But he was trying to do something tricky to outsmart the guy. He intentionally tripped over him on a drop down, faked yep. an injury to get the guy to lower his guard and try to schoolboy him. Yeah. And, and Vince and, was baffled. It was, yeah. it was different. It was clever. And it was also clever because he is facing Yokozuna at WrestleMania. Okay. And here he faced a random, it was fat too, okay? And, uh, you know, the story kind of was that this fat too gave him a real fight. And it was very difficult for Bret Hart to finally beat fat too. And so I think the idea was you were supposed to think, well, he got this guy, but it was hard. And imagine if this guy was twice as big, because that's a WrestleMania match. So I thought it was, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was clever the way they did it. And uh, I give it a thumbs up. Brett actually even tricked uh, McMahon because McMahon assumed that uh, that the head shrinker's manager had tripped him up. Yes, he, he he was on the other side of the ring. Vince gaslighted himself. Off, I must have tripped him. <laughs> he had no idea why Brett tripped over this guy on a drop down. Also, this is this is Vince McMahon booking. Um, Brett beat a big man. Yes, he'll probably he'll probably beat a few more big men on his way to 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 facing Yoko he, at the that Mania. He's facing the biggest man at Mania, so we can't fight him before that. And of course, the right. other biggest man is Giant Gonzalez, and no one wants to see that. But every other big guy they can find, Brett will probably beat him between now and then. Yep. Um, I also liked here when we the the head shrinkers used twin magic, even though they are not twins. Yeah, and it led to nothing. It was although like, they did twin magic, mm-hmm. and uh, it was. Uh, 
Fatu and Samu. Samu. Yeah. So yeah. Samu replaces Fatu. Like near the end of the match, the ref is distracted. And uh, he gets in there and he goes for a cover and Brett kicks out. And then he willingly switched again. Yes. <laughs> it's going, like, why didn't you stay in there, you <laughs> dummy? He took a break the for 10 seconds. No, you're yeah. fresh as a daisy. Yes, yes. But he got out of there. So they use twin magic, even though they are not twins. Although Fatu is the father of twins. So maybe that's close enough. That was enough to distract the ref, apparently. So eventually, there's, there's tons of interference from Alpha and Samu, and it all pays off because in the end, they're trying twin magic again, but uh, Brett bonks them together. Samu does the Cactus Jack spot where you flip over the ropes and get your head stuck. So he's stuck now. He can't he can't make the save anymore. And so Brett drop kicks off off the apron, puts uh, Fat Two in the sharpshooter, and he wins. So the finish was very clever and creative. I don't want to bury AJ Styles because I don't think it's AJ Styles' fault, but uh, AJ Styles had a horrific match with Omos on Raw. I bet it's not. And AJ's it was fault. only three minutes. Mm. But I was thinking, and uh, somebody mentioned uh, NC here says I'm sure Brett could have dragged a two-star match out of John Gonzalez. I would have liked to see Brett in his prime against Omos because hmm. I think it would have been better than this AJ Styles match. Hmm. Okay. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts? Yeah, this match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, ho, ho. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey! Look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.